Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And a blessed Monday to you during this week of Thanksgiving. We would love to hear from you. So today, we're taking questions and answers from you, our viewers. If you're watching, you know it's Monday and it's live. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980, and you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com, and check us out on Facebook, and thank you for all mm -hmm. the responses <laughs> that we received on Hundreds Facebook. Yes, thank you so yes. much. And the great question was this, what are you especially grateful for this Thanksgiving mm -hmm. 2020? We have a lot to be thankful we for. We want you to call us. We want you to email us. We want to hear from you. And so we've got some days before Thanksgiving, right? So we want to prepare for those times. Be thinking about what am I especially grateful for? Maybe list those things and think about what you're going to be doing in terms of communicating with your loved ones. So many people are doing this in a variety of ways. Some of them will be together. Some of them will be at a distance. Some of them will be doing FaceTime. Some of us will be calling. But especially reach out to those people, your, your seniors, those in nursing homes, and, and make it a special Thanksgiving for them. Joy, over the weekend, we had a, had a very special birthday of one of we our did. grandchildren. We had mm -hmm. the 16th birthday of Cecilia. Yes. And uh, she is just an absolute dear. Her name, Cecilia, is just such a beautiful name. And, uh, you know, it was interesting because we were in Rome, I guess, while uh, Nate and Rebecca, Rebecca, our daughter, was mm -hmm. pregnant mm -hmm. around that time. And we stayed in St. Francesca of Romano uh, Hotel which is the home of a saint. And St. Cecilia's was right next door. And we got so, We got so mm -hmm. close to St. Cecilia. And then Nate and Rebecca were thinking about a name for the new child, and this would become Cecilia. They got the name Cecilia, and it was co confirmed by the fact she was born on St. Cecilia Day. Yes. Amazing. A little bit about Cecilia. She's so, she's artsy. Yes. And St. Cecilia is like is one musical, of the musical, very of, talented, yes. And so Cecilia, is an artsy person. I mean, mm -hmm. she just is. Mm -hmm. And very creative, a wonderful writer, calligraphy, artist, and very, very special. Yeah, Go and on. she does, for me, she does great projects. She does all of my personal stationery. She does my thank you notes. And even at the center, she personally handwrites our uh, Christmas list to yeah. all of our donors yeah. at her choice. So she's very talented, very gifted, and she thinks nothing of it. You and know, it's like, oh, that's nothing. You know, love, we went over the house to eat, yeah. Nate and Rebecca's house, and so they have seven children, yeah. other children. Eight. Yes. Yeah, seven total yeah. besides mm -hmm. Cecilia, that's eight. And, uh, but, you know, these kids, they're, they're expected to say what they love about their sister right. or their brother. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing to, each one of them goes around and they thought about it. Mm -hmm. This is what I like about you and this is what it means to me. And it seems like the younger they get, the more it's like what you do for me. Right, <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Uh, but uh, that's such a beautiful thing. And that's a tradition I hope that everybody has mm -hmm. is that the kids themselves say, Cecilia, this is what I like about you. This is about, you know, you're funny or this or that or you know, you comfort me or you make sweet things for me and, you know, there's nobody quite like you. Well, and that's even in this season of being grateful and thankful mm -hmm. as we're coming up upon Thanksgiving this Thursday. It's words that we need to speak, mm -hmm. words of affirmation, words of kindness, words of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. um, don't hold the words back. Speak them. Speak them now yeah. while our loved ones are with them. Um, and even if it's the way that they bless your life, uh, ways that they were mm -hmm. loving and kind and generous to you, but speak the words now that we can, yeah. that will build up, that will be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah, and we're grateful for all of you. Yes. Our EW10 family at Home with Jim and Joy is grateful for you. All of our, our network is so grateful for you, and we don't really exist in terms of this mission and ministry without your prayers and without your support. And so you are a great cause of gratitude for us. Thank you for all the people that write us so often. Yes, thank to you. To email and get in touch with us, and we try to get back to you as best we can. We're praying for you. We know that some of the joys and sorrows in your life and as Mother always said, we really are family, mm. and, and we are indeed. We're going to take a break. There's plenty more to come. We want to hear from you and your gratitude this Thanksgiving. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your questions during our show. So if you're watching, you know it's Monday. It's a live broadcast. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, please give us a jingle at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And now you know it's Monday and we always put out a question. We got so many any wonderful responses. The question for today's show is this. What are you especially grateful for this Thanksgiving? And um, we heard from people far and wide. Yeah, it was yeah. so beautiful. People's responses just really, um, it's easy to be thankful when you have a grateful heart. So you can always, if your heart isn't in a place where you think, you know, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Well, first of all, that's not true. We all have many things to be thankful for. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and examine your heart. And if there's any darkness or pain or sorrow or misery or unforgiveness or resentment, mm -hmm. so that your heart would be pure and holy and it would be ever flowing yeah. with love and gratefulness and kindness. Just ask the Holy Spirit to come in and examine you. Yeah. And cleanse and you. It's and great free to do you. this at the beginning of the week. It's like you know, like you yes. say, an examination and all that you'd yes. be grateful for. And and maybe there's people you're out of sorts with. Give thanks for them. Mm -hmm. Be grateful for them. Not, not every little nuance or deals or whatever. And maybe as far as it's in your power, reconcile with them. Uh, you know, on your part, just say, I'm thinking about you th this Thanksgiving. I am really grateful for you this Thanksgiving. And make sure that you connect with them. What can I do? What are my plans this week so that Thanksgiving Day? As far as it's in my power, I'm at peace with everyone. Joy, why don't you introduce our special guest that's going to share with us for a few well, minutes. Well, we have outstanding, beautiful Debbie Cowden <sighs> on the line today. Now, who is Debbie? Debbie was our former producer before she was married, and she was Dave? just a young starling. And then she married Dave. She used to host. Yeah. Um, religious catalog with me right. sometimes, and then she did that all by herself with Jeanette, and even alone she did it. But right now, she, she did is- even a little stint on Pro-Life Weekly. She did. And she's a digital media specialist, so she does a lot of communications at EWTN.com. And she, as well as our posting on our own Facebook, she posted on EWTN yes. Facebook. And when, when we go on EWTN Facebook for responses, like we get hundreds and hundreds it of, lights of responses. Up. But Debbie, other than that, those all those lovely things that she does, she's a wife yes. to her beloved husband, Dave. She's the mother of three. And so she has Dave, Gianna, and Franny, the new baby. And, and Dave. And then they moved, and so she's just got a lot going on. Yeah. And she's well, let her tell. Are you there? Outstanding. Debbie, you there? Debbie, we want to welcome you to At Home. Hi, Jim and Joy. Long time no see, but it is good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you and hear your beautiful voice. Tell us how you are. Well, thankful, first yes. of all. We, we have been so incredibly blessed, even in the past year, with all of the craziness. Um, you know, I've been especially busy with the social media on or for EWTN, just yeah. making sure that we're answering all of the viewers' questions about where they can watch EWTN, how they can get adoration, how to work the EWTN mobile app and things like that. So yeah. I've been really busy with that. We've been busy with homeschooling our oldest, Gianna, um, keeping our two-year-old Anthony busy. And then we just welcomed Francis Clare in September. So it's just been blessings upon blessings. And, you know, in the past year with everything that we've been going through COVID, I think the biggest lesson that our family has learned is to have an attitude of gratitude and to really be grateful for all of the blessings that we may have otherwise taken for granted. I mean, who would have thought that people would be thankful for toilet paper this year, but who would be thankful for toilet paper? And we're thankful for, you know, my job and Dave's job working at a hospital. And even though sometimes he works in a COVID unit, mm. uh, we're thankful that he has the, the personal protective equipment to keep him safe. We're thankful that he has a job. He was furloughed for three months and wow. while I was pregnant. And so if mm. you want to talk about trying to find reasons to be thankful, mm. um, we're thankful that God never abandoned us. Mm. Um, we're thankful for the EWTN family who's been so supportive of us, not just in terms of the friendship, but also the, the grounding in our faith. We've yeah. been watching daily mass on EWTN ever since March. We've been praying. 
uh, the rosary with the friars every morning. We were able to take part in that extraordinary Irby at Orby blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, And really, we had a chance to suffer with the body of Christ and help build up the body of Christ by praying for each other and their suffering, helping them um, monetarily in suffering and making sure that they had resources that they needed when they were struggling um, and praying for those who have died, especially those who mm. died alone. Um, mm-hmm. So just having the opportunity to strengthen the body of Christ is something that we're thankful for. Uh, and we're also so thankful that our pastor, when he baptized Francis Claire earlier this month, that he also consecrated her to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So our whole family is consecrated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to St. Joseph, um, and consecrated to Jesus Christ. So we have lots and lots and lots of reasons to be thankful. And Mm. I would just encourage uh, the viewers who are watching, listening right now, if you're struggling and if you're in a hard place, to really find those little things to be thankful for because we know that God is so good. And even in the times of struggle and the suffering, that he never abandons us. Mm. Wow. And and I'm thankful that I have a chance to talk to you guys today, too. It's that's fun. That is beautifully said, and I'm sure that your words are a blessing to many, many people. And again, that whole thing of the EWTN family, you have a perspective on that that's very unique because you get to hear through the social media so many people, and you've expressed their gratitude for our work. You express those who've been suffering, those whose lives were lost through COVID and other ways and how we as a family intercede one for another. And we have grateful hearts. We have Mm -hmm. grateful hearts above all else for Jesus Christ, his son and his victory over death and hell and the grave. Debbie, God bless you and your family. You're a beautiful model family for all of us. God keep you. God bless you too, Jim and Joy. Thank you. Love you. Give our love to Dave. Yes, we will. Bless you. Well, that was... I knew it would be great what you have to say. She's outstanding. That was like, wow. She never disappoints, ever, never. That that was so heart. I mean, what what a great representative of the network. No, it (laughs) is. You know, and one of the things that we're grateful for, it's true, especially during this COVID pandemic where people, we are getting to go to church. But there are a lot of people out there who are still being restricted as to what they can do and how they can go to church and... Here in Birmingham, you know, we practice social distancing guidelines. We're wearing masks. We're doing all that. And our priests, we're so thankful for all of our priests. And they have even expanded masses so more people can come in less less of a crowded time, right? So we get all that. And we're thankful for all of the priests and the brothers and the sisters here at EWTN who pray for this network, who pray for you. And uh, we just have so much to be thankful for. And we all want to be back together face to face, yes. but it's kind of like the local parishes have learned what EW10 learned a long time ago in terms of evangelization and nurture through the media. Right. And so all of them have said, hey, we want, we want to connect with our people. Yes. And, and they're doing that. Those who can't come, then they're connecting in that way. And God's given us this technology for his honor and for his glory, and, and they're using it. So there's always, there's always a, a rainbow yes. to look for. Well, we have Diane on the phone. Diane, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment? Hi. Happy Thanksgiving. And Happy Thanksgiving to you. And uh, I'm grateful for my family and for my church family. And my question is, I'm 70 years old, very crippled with arthritis. Mm. I go to church online. Mm. I've always been a helper, and I'm very restricted now. I almost don't see anybody anymore. What opportunity could I have to share the good news of Jesus mm. with other people? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're doing that right now, mm-hmm. maybe with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. So thank you for having the courage and desire to come forward and have fellowship with us. One of the things that uh, Joy and I do for EWTN is the EWTN Media Missionaries. I'd encourage you to join the EWTN Media Missionaries and uh, because we're looking for intercessors, those who will intercede and pray in a unique way, joining with the other 14,000 intercessors in a special way that are EWTN Media Missionaries. So that would be a great thing to do, and we can send you information on that. We can send you program schedules. If people come to your home or you go... 
go someplace, you can hand out to them some of these brochures and, and other items. That would be a great thing. And I, I would just say, whoever comes within your path, whoever you're speaking to, to just share naturally with them about the Lord Jesus Christ and, like you said, what the church means to you, mm. whether they're in the church or not, and to say, this is the thing that I'm most grateful for in my life, a relationship with the living God, and I suffer and I'm in pain, and yet I give my pain as a sacrifice to the Lord. I fill up the cup of His suffering. So there's a lot you can do, and just be always ready to give the answer for the hope that is within you and, and do it with God's love with God's peace and with God's respect. And, and don't um, discount your prayer life for sure. I had a friend, her name was Julia, and she was bedridden uh, for decades, decades and uh, with arthritis, a crippling arthritis. And what she was in our parish family, she was our church warrior. And um, she got our entire church through many a storm, personally and collectively as a group. And so if you're bedridden and there's things that you can't do where you can't get out and you're restricted in your mobility, your spirit is wide open, full alive, fully alive, right? And so you want to use what God has given you. You have a voice, you have a heart, you have a spirit, and you want to turn that into a greater good. You want God to bring a greater good out of that. Thank you so much, Diane, another, for contacting us. We have another phone us. call from Marge. You're at home with Jim and Joy, Marge. Go right ahead and share with us what you're thankful for as we move towards Thanksgiving. Well, um, mine is very, very simple. Nothing in particular. Just to be here, to be thankful, mm. to be thankful. Mm. Very simple. Yes. It doesn't entail a lot of, of specials. Just the ability to be thankful to God for everything. Amen. Mm, thank That's beautiful, you, Marge. Marge. So beautiful. Keep it simple. It's there. You know, and I was thinking as, as Marge was sharing that, I was thinking of a mother and father with a child. That blesses the parent so much just to hear the child say, I'm so glad I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I have you, Mom and Dad. I love you. And I think, I think you delight the father's heart. Because unless you humble yourself and become like a child, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And you know what? There's a lot of things in life, everything that's happening, the joys and sorrows over all your ages, and you're just saying, I give thanks for you, dear God. Mm -hmm. And I th I'm grateful that I exist. You know how many people aren't grateful that they exist? Yes. In this society and in this culture. But you are affirmed by the Father. You understand that. And that's the greatest thing that we could give to God is to be who we are. And what I hear you saying is, I am a child of God. I'm your child, Father. Thank you. I glory in you. I praise you. I bless you. Thank you. Well, we have a comment from one of our Facebook friends. It says, I'm thankful that when our church is closed, I found EWTN and have been able to watch Mass live daily, pray the rosary with Mother Angelica and the friars, and I'm also very thankful for my family and friends and pray for their continued good health. And this is from Denise. So she found EWTN Yeah, doing this thing? because, you know, the church is closed, and so it's like, okay, well, I got to go to church, or maybe your church isn't, um, yeah. didn't go with all the technology, and, yeah. you know, and it was hard to get connected. It took, it, you know, people had to pivot and find a new way. Yeah. And so, but EWTN. ETN never missed a beat. They're there 24-7. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing I think EWTN, EWTN was at the place of development that it's at. Yes. Because we didn't have the reach that we have all over the place. But in God, you know, you could say, well, God knew this was going to be coming. Some people said, well, if he knew it was coming, why didn't he stop it? And that's mm -hmm. a whole other mystery. Mm -hmm. But thank God we were at the place where we were in terms of the level of technology that we have to reach people and that people could come to sanity. Yes. People could come to hope. People can come to not denial that these things aren't going on. They are going on. But we, we have the answer. Mm. Jesus Christ is the answer. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit is the answer. The church he's established is the answer. And, and that's for believers and non-believers alike. To say, right. we're here for you. We're here for everyone. Belief, believer, different religions, what, whatever. We're not going to compromise our faith and what we believe. But we respect the dignity of every human being and want to give you hope. You're not alone. And you're yearning, you're yearning for God, whether you're, you've come to him or not. You're yearning for him. This is a time of making you wonder about life and death and what's happening, what's happening in here. And Jesus Christ is the answer for you. 
Come to him more fully. He says, come to me, all you who travel and heavy laden, and I'll refresh you. Mm. Take my yoke upon your neck and learn from me. I'm gentle, I'm lowly of heart. You'll find rest for your soul. Come to him today and be filled with that grateful heart. EWTN is here for you. We're going to take a break. Thanks for all of your responses. We'll be right back. Don't go away. back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to go to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, Pope Francis celebrated the feast of Christ the King mm -hmm. yesterday. Tell us about that. Well, hi, Jim and Joy. Greetings from the Eternal City on this day after the splendid celebration of the feast of Christ the King. And this was celebrated with great joy in the Vatican, but of course, because of COVID, with uh, a quite a number of restrictions, a small group of faithful. Now, the main focal point of the Mass yesterday at the altar of the chair was the passage of the World Youth Day Cross from Young People of Panama, where the last International World Youth Day was held, to a group of people, of young people from Lisbon, Portugal, where Youth Day will be celebrated internationally in 2023. Now, for decades, Youth Day has been celebrated between the international celebrations on a diocesan level and always on Palm Sunday. But Pope Francis surprised us yesterday when he announced that he intended to move the diocesan World Youth Day celebrations from Palm Sunday to the Feast of Christ the King. And um, now this announcement came just before the passage of the World Youth Day Cross and of the icon of Salus Populi Romani. And the Pope called the entire event a significant celebration. In fact, he said, the center of the celebrations remains the mystery of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of man. As St. John Paul II, the initiator and patron of World Youth Day, always emphasized. And then Francis himself told young people, he said, cry out with your life that Christ lives and reigns. And then he quoted some words of Christ from the gospel saying, if you keep silent, the very stones will cry out. Now, what's interesting, let's talk for a minute about the feast of Christ the King, because it's a relative newcomer to the Western liturgical calendar. And it was Pope Pius XI who established this in 1925, and it was to be an antidote to the growing secularism at the time. Secularism being, of course, where man lives, eats, breathes, works, uh, etc., as if God did not exist. Now, in 1969, with the motu proprio, Pope Paul VI transferred this feast day to the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And by the way, of course, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent and the first Sunday of the new liturgical year. So, um, and Paul VI did declare this, the um, gave it the highest rank of solemnity, which means that liturgical vestments will be gold or white, as they are for any event honoring Jesus. So, a wonderful celebration here. I'm sure yours was too, but time's up here, so back to you. Joan, thanks so much for that report. It's always wonderful to see your face, and thank you for lifting up for us once again, Jesus Christ, King of the universe. Mm -hmm. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name, something about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is coming back, and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Oh, aren't you thankful for that? Mm. It's been wonderful to be with you this day as we prepare for the coming of Thanksgiving. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.